The New York Times called our next guest book an engaging, insightful, unsettling, and revealing memoir that tells a coming-of-age story. Here to share more about her journey and discuss her book, Looking for Palestine, is author Naja Saeed. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? Good. How are you? All right. So let's start with the subtitle. Yes. Growing up confused. Yes. <laughs> what were you confused, confused about? It's so funny. When I first saw the subtitle, I was like, now everyone's going to think that means I was gay and they're going to get all confused because <laughs> confused is usually right. used. Um, I was confused about everything. I grew up, um, my father was Palestinian. He was a well-known Palestinian intellectual, but he was an American who was an English professor and my family was Christian. My mother was Lebanese. She, My dad's family was... Baptist and um, Episcopalian. My mom's family was Quaker and Pre Presbyterian. I didn't understand, and, and I grew up, I was born in 1974, so I grew up in New York. Um, and I, what I saw on TV of like Arabs and Middle Eastern mm -hmm. people was Muslims, and, and I just didn't understand where I was from. And then I went to school with blonde girls, and then I went mm -hmm. to school with Jewish people. I don't know. I was very So confused. how did that... Yeah. How did that affect your interpretation of who you were and the comfortability in your own skin? Um, that's a lot of what the book is about. Mm -hmm. I was very much um, troubled by... Um, a, a lot of it is also about class and, and mm -hmm. that's that sort of thing. But n New York that I grew up in and I went to private school was, you know, I went to a, an all-girls school with... Um, basically white girls and I thought there was something wrong with me because I was dark and mm. I was the only one and then mm. I went to school on the west side I switched schools and everyone was Jewish and that was difficult for me because I was Palestinian and Lebanese and it was around the time where the first intifada started my dad would be on TV doing interviews all the time and I sort of felt suddenly I became this Arab mm. um, and it was a very strange identity because I was so American in so many ways and I I I had spent I had spent time as a kid in Lebanon and experienced the war and experienced so much of being Arab yet I was fully American and I just felt like there was no place for me cuz I I didn't really people wouldn't consider me a mi minority mm. um and then after 9/11 of course everything changed and then I became a minority somehow and mm. it's been a very interesting How did that change impact your life? Well, I think well I I'm an actress by, I mean, that was my original profession um, before I wrote the book. And I mean, it's still my profession, but I, I realized when I graduated from college and I pursued acting that in the years following 9-11 that I was basically going to be offered um, auditions and parts that were in the context of stories about terrorism mm -hmm. and you know the Middle East in that context and that's not the world that I ever knew mm -hmm. or grew up in and it became very frustrating um, and difficult because all of a sudden you're politicized first of all if you mm -hmm. say you're Palestinian it's like a political statement and right. it's really just your ethnicity and then you're given um, the opportunities you're given in that sort of world are always in the context of being Palestinian it's like mm -hmm. you cannot be just a person you yeah. cannot be um, an American, you become an yeah. Arab American, and it is, it's always hovering over everything you do, and it's it's difficult, mm -hmm. I think. So, Did you ever <clears throat> contemplate changing your name, actually? Yes. Because mm. that, to me, looking at you, yeah. you could be any ethnicity. You could play Italian, you could play Latina, right. you could play Russian. I mean, you could play so many different ethnicities, yes. but your name is a bit of a tip-off. Right. Well, there's two things. One is that I did think of it think about it, but um, first of all, my dad was already well known, and mm -hmm. so I already have this burden, I guess that's the word you would use, mm -hmm. um, in the sense that well, people... Well, it's a gift and a curse. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so I already had that, so I thought about it in that context. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about it, and I just thought, who who is that? Who would that person be? Like, mm -hmm. I, I just, the idea, it was just a personal thing that I felt really disconnected from um, I didn't like the idea of sort of giving up the name my parents had given me. I understand. Even yeah. though, even if it's just a professional reason, mm -hmm. um, it's it was just it's difficult for me because I do <clears throat> love my culture and my identity, and I didn't want to have to hide it. And it's yeah. also, it's not 1933. No. You know, I don't have to change my name. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like I shouldn't have to. But it's I think still McCarthy some people, yeah. you know, Either. Yeah. some young people may still be going through some of the same things yes. you went through with self-identity. So why did you want to write this book and be so transparent for the world? Well, that's exactly um, what you just said, is mm -hmm. because there's young people. Well, the way I wrote the book, it's more of a 
I always say this. When I was a little girl, I only had Toni Morrison to read in mm -hmm. terms of understanding what it was like to be um, a different someone who is different. And so I would read The Bluest Eye, and oh, I'd read it over yes, and over again, classic. and I thought this is, but it has, the actual context of it is nothing like my life. Mm -hmm. um, but I figured that it would be great to write my story because I knew that other people, with whatever differences they have, mm -hmm. even if they are going through like a gender or sexuality confusion, mm -hmm. would be able to relate to it in the universality of it, but then also, it sort of humanizes the idea of Arab Americans or Arabs in general, um, mm -hmm. that we're complicated. There's 22 different countries. We're not all Muslim. Mm -hmm. We're not all whatever people think. And, and, and I also thought that people are very intimidated by these ideas, and I was as well, mm -hmm. even though my father wrote about it and wrote a book that sort of defined how um, he sort of wrote a book. He wrote a book called Orientalism, which basically um, mm -hmm delineated for people that, that ideas of the Middle East were yeah. sort of made up. Mm -hmm. And I still believed that I should have magic powers and the genie in a bottle and all of these <laughs> things that like mm -hmm. I didn't know. And I thought yeah. that there were <clears throat> Muslim terrorists and like things, that I just had all the same thing. Wow. So I thought if I didn't understand it and I grew up in that household, then I can only do a service to other people by admitting that like I had to figure it out too and it's it's okay. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for writing thank the book you. and help opening people's eyes to that. Thank you. All right. Thank you for being here. Thank and you we for can get it me. wherever books are sold. Wherever right? books are sold. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank and we'll you. be right back with more Rise Entertainment 360.